Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the game Last Will, in which you and your fellow players are all nephews of a very rich uncle in Victorian England. And that uncle has just died. Hooray! You see, you didn't really know your uncle very well, but on his deathbed, he realised that despite having a great deal of wealth, he never took the time to enjoy life. So, in his last will, he gave each of his surviving nephews a certain amount of money, and the one who spends it the fastest will inherit his fortune, and thus win the game. Last Will is played over a number of rounds. At the start of each round, cards are placed onto spaces of the game board depending on the current round number. This space, for example, gets a property card in rounds 1 to 3, and an event card in rounds 4 and later. In turn order, each player then plans their day by selecting one of the hourglass spaces on the planning board. This determines how many cards they get to draw, how many errands they get to run, and how many actions they have for that round. The game ends after seven rounds, or when one player has gone bankrupt. The player with the least money left at the end of the game, or the one with the biggest debt, is declared the winner. In the planning phase, players take it in turns to make their plans for the day ahead. Each player must select a different hourglass space. The order of the markers from left to right will determine the order of play for the rest of that round, which is why the spaces to the right have more benefits. When you place your planning marker, you draw cards equal to the number shown. Cards may be drawn for many of the four main decks, but you must decide which cards to take before looking at any of them. You may not take cards on the game board or ones from the special deck. Note that drawing a lot of cards is not always the best thing to do, because you have to discard down to two at the end of the round, so you might not have time to play all of them. However, drawing extra cards gives you a greater chance of getting something that you want. After you have planned your day, it's time for running some errands, or at least getting somebody else to run them for you. Depending on the plan you chose, you will get to perform one or two errands. Each player first performs one errand in the order of the markers on the planning board. Then, each player with a second errand to perform does that again in the same order. When it's your turn, place one of your top hats onto one of the available spaces on the board and immediately perform that errand. These errand spaces simply mean that you take the card that is on the space into your hand. This space extends your player board, allowing you to have more cards in play. Here, you book a seat at the theatre, costing you £2 and these spaces allow you to draw one card from either of the four main decks. Note that there is one space for each player. And finally, the property market allows you to rearrange the market prices for the four different types of property. If only I could do that in real life. The action phase is where you get to spend your time in trying to lose as much money as possible. In turn order, each player uses all of their actions before play passes to the next player. The number of actions you get to spend is shown on the planning board. There are a number of different actions that can be performed, so I'm going to go through each of them one at a time. First up, the event cards with the white border. These are the perfect activities for any rich English gentleman to spend his money on, such as going to the theatre or an expensive boat trip. These cards are played from your hand and then discarded. They cost one or more actions to play, and lose you the amount of money indicated. Some cards allow you to take companions with you, giving you the opportunity to spend even more money. For example, this carriage ride only costs you £2 if you go on your own, but if you bring along a lady friend by discarding this card, you lose £4 instead. Some cards have multiple companions on them. Any or all of these companions may be played, so if you wanted to, you could go on this boat trip with just your dog and a chef, despite what your friends might say. Some event cards have other special abilities. The Hectic Day card allows you to gain more actions as you speed around London on your brand new penny farthing. Next up, the Helpers and Expenses cards, which are black bordered. These cards must first be played onto your own player board, which cost you one action, as indicated here. Some cards, such as this very exclusive Gentleman's Club, are so good that they cost an extra action to play them onto your board. Once played, the card may be activated once per round by sliding it down. The effect of activating a card is shown in the top right. Some cards cost an action to activate them, such as this carriage. 
This reservation, however, loses you £2 without needing to spend an action. You have a table booked at a posh restaurant, paid for in advance, and you don't even bother turning up. Some cards give you a permanent bonus, as indicated by icons on the lower part of the card. This waiter means that each time you go for a meal at a restaurant, that is, use any card with this icon on it, you lose an extra £1, as the waiter always demands a large tip. The Old Friend is a very useful card, as it gives you one extra action each round, including the round in which you play it. Who doesn't want a man in a top hat turning up with two bottles of wine? There are many other cards as well, including the Gardener, who costs you more money when maintaining a property, the Crooked Estate Agent, who loses you more money when selling a house, and the School Chum, who draws you extra cards. The Companion cards mentioned earlier also come in useful with some of the black bordered cards. For example, this carriage card will lose you £1 per round. However, if you spend another action and discard a guest card, you can add a companion token here. From now on, you can lose £3 each round, as your new friend insists on buying shiny things as she rides through London on your carriage. These are the property cards, which can be a great way of losing money. Buying a property costs one action, and the card is played onto your player board. You must also pay the amount of money shown by the highest banknote symbol in the top left corner. This price is modified by the current market prices on the main board, based on the type of property. So buying this mansion would cost you £16. However, this isn't as good as it first appears, because you cannot go bankrupt whilst you still own property. So at some point before the end of the game, you're going to have to sell the property, which uses up another action. Remember the goal of the game is to lose money, so you want to buy high and sell low. When you buy a property, place a value marker on the highest space. Properties require regular maintenance. This mansion, for example, means that you can spend an action and lose £3. Any property which is not maintained during a round depreciates in value and you move the value marker down one space. A great deal of money can be lost by playing the property market well. For example, you paid £16 for this mansion. If you don't bother to maintain it over the course of a few rounds, and then manipulate the market prices like this, you could sell it for only £4. Some properties also have companion icons on them, similar to the expenses cards. In this townhouse, for example, you can use one action to employ a fancy chef, which means you can then use an action to lose £5 instead of 3 and if you invite a female guest to stay in the property as well, the cost to maintain it increases even further. At the end of the round, if nobody has gone bankrupt, then each player must discard down to two cards in their hand. Any properties that were not maintained depreciate in value, and all cards that a player activated are reset back to their normal position. Any cards remaining on the main game board are removed, players take back their markers, and a new round begins. When a player has no money and no property, they can declare bankruptcy. This signals the end of the game, although the round is always played out till the end. If nobody declares bankruptcy by the end of the seventh round, then the game ends anyway. The winner of the game is the player who runs up the biggest debt, although if nobody went bankrupt, it's the player with the least money at the end of the game that wins, with any properties still owned counting as part of their wealth. And that's it! I'm off round London now for a nice carriage ride with my lady friend, and then I'm off to a lovely restaurant with Mr Spangles. Take care, and thanks for watching.